Welcome to Lex's World. Today I wanted to chat about my nutrient or fertilizer philosophy. Now most kinds of growing mediums like soil tend to contain some nutrients, but this discussion is more about the ones you add on. Which nutrients are worth using and which ones aren't. Also wanted to talk about the additive requirements for indoor versus outdoor growers. Um, so there's a lot to talk about. Obviously there are rarely two growers with the same nutrient philosophy and if there's ever a grower who's definitely right, I haven't met them. So this is a bit of an opinion episode but take it for what it's worth. Let's start with how much nutrients should I be using and should I be using them at all? So there are some growers out there who go the no nutrient route. Just water, sunlight and growing medium. Maybe at most they do some pH correction on their water depending on the soil where they live. And otherwise that's all they do. And I do not believe that this natural route is the best option. Many of the supposed benefits of the no fertilization school of thought, like better taste or cleaner cannabis products, can be largely addressed with simple growing tactics like good flushing before harvest. Meanwhile, the downsides of going all natural are steep. If you grow this root, yes, your yield quantity will suffer, even if your THC percentage doesn't. That's a big deal when a gram of harvest is worth several dollars. Growing with no nutrients is also very tricky unless you're an experienced grower, because if your plant runs into problems, then your ability to help the plants without using fertilizers is limited. Then on the other side of the spectrum are growers who use so many manures, composts, nutrient solutions, and rooting solutions that their supply closet looks like a plant pharmacy. I'm not a fan of this either. From a scientific standpoint, an overabundance of nutrients in a growing medium disrupts that medium's chemical balance. This imbalance makes it impossible for cannabis to uptake certain nutrients while others become oversupplied. Also, if you go to that many nutrients and fail to flush properly, your harvest is guaranteed to taste like garbage. From a cost and efficiency viewpoint, it's not good either, because you tend to spend a surprising amount of money on all these different types of fertilizer. Not to mention your most common plant problem becomes nutrient burn instead of some kind of deficiency. Which carries me into the tangent of fertilization for indoor versus outdoor growers. I believe that indoor growers can and should use more nutrients than outdoor growers. Regardless of growing medium, outdoors your plants are simply less susceptible to deficiencies for a variety of reasons, including that the fact that there's better air movement, full spectrum sunlight, more CO2 exposure, and so on. It takes an awful lot of work to simulate the outdoors perfectly indoors, so fertilizing more indoors is acceptable. And finally, soil versus hydroponics. You soil growers need a whole lot less nutrients than hydroponic growers, because even simple garden soil in itself contains a whole lot of nutrients that you don't need to infill. To sum up, I believe that the right amount of nutrients is some, outside the world of indoor hydroponic growers who understandably use a lot more. So what's worth adding? First off, I believe your macronutrient solutions are worth adding. Macronutrients are the nutes that your girls need at all stages of growth and in pretty significant amounts, and they are, of course, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. My favorite solutions are simple, one bottle solutions, one for vegetative phase, and another for flowering phase. The vegetative solution contains more nitrogen to avoid nitrogen deficiency in that stage. So now you're at two bottles. I'll link to some macronutrients that I trust in the description. Then there's your secondary nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. 
Generally, I do not believe you need to add those or keep them on hand unless you see the deficiencies in the cannabis plants first. Though indoors it's acceptable to add magnesium during vegetative phase, because otherwise some magnesium deficiency is quite common indoors. So if you're an indoor grower, you're now up to three bottles. And finally, there are micronutrients like manganese, iron, zinc, and so on. Largely, those will come from your water and your growing medium. You do not need to concern yourself with many of these unless you're filtering virtually everything out of your water with a fairly intense process like reverse osmosis. Uh, I've seen some people who do uh, reverse osmosis and they've had various uh, very rare deficiencies come up because they're pulling those nutrients out of the water. Next, let's talk manures. A lot of people swear by manures as an alternative to any nutrient solution or as a supplement to it. There's no shortage of animals to choose manures from, but I like chicken manure and bat guano as my favorite choices. Bat guano has an excellent reputation among growers, while chicken manure is very economical and it contains decomposed chicken feathers which are chock full of nitrogen. I'll link to both manures in the description as well. So counting the pH bottles, you indoor growers now have a grand total of five bottles, and you outdoor growers have four. People using manures might only have the pH and magnesium on hand. So nothing too crazy, and I think that's as it should be. Okay, wrapping up here, I wanted to mention a few other additives. For example, I think that adding unsulfured molasses, which is sugar, to your grow is useful. I don't think it does anything for taste, but it does increase uh, the THC production on the plant. It's also good to use Epsom salt instead of store-bought magnesium solution if you are experiencing magnesium deficiency. By the way, I have a whole episode on magnesium deficiency. But using rooting solutions for your seedlings is probably a waste of money. There is a lot of these rooting solutions on sale. They cost quite a bit, and I don't think they do a heck of a lot. You will gain more by improving your germination and rooting techniques. What else do you really need to think about with newts? Well, you gotta mind your pH. All your great nutrient and manures won't do much good if the pH is wrong for some reason. So be sure to always adjust it based on your growing medium and be sure to watch my pH guide for both soil and hydroponics for tips on that. Again, link to below. Also remember that there's a second hoop to jump through after you develop your nutrient scheme, customizing that philosophy for a particular strain. For example, you might find that a certain strain gets better results from one manure versus another. This can't be discovered unless you do multiple, fairly consistent runs of the same strain and become a specialist at it. But that's really kind of in the advanced growing world. That's the show for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. I'm Lex Blazer, and we'll see you next time on Lex's World.